So we've talked about all 20 of the amino acid building blocks of proteins, but before we go and actually build those proteins, I want to go over a few things to do with the general properties of amino acids. In particular, I'd like to talk about the ionization of side chains and the titration of amino acids. So let's do an example of one of these. We'll call this the titration of aspartic acid. Aspartic acid is one of our amino acids that is polar, charged, and typically negatively charged side chain in neutral pH. Now we've done a lot of titrations before in previous chapter, and I want to just challenge you to do this all on your own. I'm going to start off with, uh, over here, the structure of aspartic acid. It's fully protonated. That's how we always do titrations. We start with it fully protonated. You assign the pKa's, which I've given you here. We draw out the structures, and you then go ahead and titrate it. So let's go ahead and do this. And what I'd like you to do is a multi-step process here. I'd like you to fill out the titration chart, the full titration from 0 to 14 pH. Second, I'd like you to determine which structures, which two structures are predominant at pH 7.4, that is in the blood, and lastly, which of those two structures is most prevalent, which is the one that has the most there. So let's go ahead and do the full titration. You have everything you need here to get started. Pause the video, take five or 10 minutes, do this and answer those questions, and then start her up again and we'll go through it. Okay, titration is a skill that we want you to learn. And like I said, we always start with the molecule fully protonated and you then take off one proton at a time. So let's take a look at what structures we're going to have here. We're gonna first take off the proton that is the lowest pKa. Remember, the lowest is loosest, and therefore we're gonna go ahead and remove that proton. Everything else will remain fully protonated for now. Uh, this is going to be governed by a pKa of 2.2. I'll write it right on the arrow there. The next pKa is the other or side chain carboxylate. So let's go ahead and take that off. We're going to take one proton off at a time. And whatever we had deprotonated already is still deprotonated. And whatever has not been deprotonated is still protonated. Lastly, we're going to remove the proton from the NH3, and we do that as we pass through 9.7, and then we end up with fully deprotonated uh, aspartate. We've got four structures, A, B, C, and D, and we can now proceed to the titration itself. Let's go ahead and move down and set this up. As always, we're going to plot out um, the pH on the y-axis, that's 0 to 14, and down here we'll have the sodium hydroxide equivalents. Now, we have three protons, that means we need three equivalents, and the way to handle that is to divvy this up into three parts. So, where do we start? We start in the middle of the first equivalent, and we're going to use that pKa. I'll just peek up there and remember that it was 2.2. So we're going to go ahead and start in the middle of the first equivalent and plot out 2.2. We're then going to give yourself a nice gentle slope going up through that, concave down on the left, concave up on the right, and that's the first titration portion there. Then we go to the next pKa for the next equivalent, start right in the middle. That is gonna be 
we're going to have that be gentle curving up like that. Tight uh, curves up on the right, down on the left a little bit there. And then we go to the final one, which again, I gotta look up there to remember what the PKA is, 9.7. You need that information. Start in the middle with 9.7. Give yourself a nice gentle titration curve, concave down on the right. We're gonna connect those all together and concave up on the right and that is your full titration. Now let's remember that we start over here with fully titrated uh, or fully protonated at the lowest pH. As we pass through the first equivalents we get all B out here, we get all C, and then through the third equivalents you get all D. If we wanted to we could go ahead and put in appropriate buffering ranges this one has three buffering ranges I didn't ask you to do that but we could and you would have to figure out where this molecule is able to buffer um, we could also note that the buffering range is pretty much solid through uh, 1.2 all the way up to 5.3. They almost completely overlap. That's where you get a nice long flat area there. So that's our titration curve. Uh, we've labeled out the four types or the four positions of these four structures. Uh, let's consider where we are at pH 7.4. I'll use some different color here. We'll use black for that. pH 7.4 is right here. That's what it would be in the blood. And what we can say for sure is that C is going to be one of those structures that we have uh, at pH 7.4. But which is the other one, B or D? The answer is it's going to be C and D. Why? Because we have kind of finished off the titration here at this point of B to C. We've made 100% C, which is about here, and we are now in the process of making C into D. So the answer to these questions is that the two structures that are present in the blood are C and D. And the one that's prevalent is by far C. That is going to be the one that's closest to that particular pH right there. So could I ask you to figure out how much of the C and D you have in the blood? Sure, we would just use the henderson hasselbach equation to do that, and that's all fine and good. Before we finish this page, this is a long page, uh, this is uh, something I'd like to do at the bottom. I'd like to ask one more question, and that is, what pH generates a net neutral amino acid of aspartate? Again, what pH gives you a net neutral aspartate? Pause it for a second and see if you can figure that out. Okay, how do we answer this question? Well, what we're gonna do is go back up to our structures and look at those four structures and first figure out which one is net neutral. And the answer is structure B. Of all the four structures, this one over here is positively charged. This is neutral, this is negative one, and this is negative two. The net neutral structure is B. We can go back to B, and you can figure out what the pH is for that. So it would be right about here. Net neutral pH is what we're going to call the small p, capital I, or isoelectric point. And it's about 3 point, I don't know, maybe 3.3 or something like that. Let's go to the bottom of the page. The isoelectric point is the pH that gives a net neutral structure. And that's a very biochemical thing to learn about. And sometimes when something is net neutral, it has slightly different properties. So we want you to be aware of that. Okay, one of our longest videos. Let's stop it here and pick it up on the next.